Hello and welcome to Paint You. In this episode, we're going to be going over the absolute basic essentials for pinstriping. We're going to be going over reducers and mineral spirits, my personal dagger brush of choice, and different things that you can practice on. It's going to be a very exciting episode, so I hope you enjoy, and let's get into it. First things first, mineral spirits. I don't mess around with anything else. Odorless mineral spirits I found to be the best out there and the cheapest. What I'm doing now is I'm just dunking the brand new Series 10 MAC brush. This is a triple lot MAC brush in some mineral spirits so I can shave the tip of that brush. We have to get rid of just a couple of those rogue tip hairs there just so we get nice, clean, crisp lines every time. This is super easy to do. All we're doing is taking that tip off right there. I got a brand new straight blade. I don't mess with any old blades. I like a nice brand new blade, nice and sharp, so I can have a nice clean cut on my hairs. I'm gonna stumble while I try to hold it with my left hand and pull the brush away. Now you can see those hairs are perfect and ready to go. Next, I'm grabbing some Alpha Enamel striping enamels. These paints are super nice. They come in a bottle so you don't get a lot of waste, kind of like you do from Ronin and One Shot, but they all have their pros and cons. We'll get into that in a different episode. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm palleting my brush. There was a little bit of mineral spirits on the hair, not much. It was mostly dry. So I'm just palleting, getting all that hair loaded up and ready to start striping. So these are the basics of design lines right here. You got your C curves. Notice how I'm turning the brush in my fingertips to clear the belly of the brush out of the way so I don't get any weird lines. And then we have an S turn. See how I'm twisting that brush between my fingertips? Go the other way. And also notice how I'm using my pinkies as stabilizers for my hands. I really, I really, really like the pinky method or the tripod method or whatever you want to call it because it gives me max stability. Now we're going to go the other way. And right here I'm using a piece of glass with just some white paper underneath it so I can see what I'm doing. Glass is really nice to work on. It's easy to clean up and you can kind of store it wherever but I'm going to get into something a little better than glass to practice on in just a little bit. So hold tight. I'm going to do another S turn here. Notice how I'm twisting that brush between my fingers, clearing the belly out of the way. So I get a nice clean line and a straight line right here at the end. Boop. All right. And as you can see right here with these different designs, all there are is S and C curves. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. I developed these pinstripe practice sheets as a way to give you something to work on. They're reusable, double-sided. You could practice on them, wipe them off, keep practicing on them, give you a bunch of different designs, a bunch of different styles. I really enjoy working on these things, and they're super convenient. They don't break like glass does. They're super easy to tuck out of the way. And I'm going to show you how to use one right here. While I was showing you those, my brush got a little dry. So I'm putting just the tip of the brush into some mineral spirits. And I'm repalleting and reloading the hairs of this brush so we can stripe. You want to make sure that you get some good flow of paint off of those hairs. So always run a couple lines. Make sure that your consistency is right. And then you can get started. I try to get an up close and personal view for you guys here so you could see how I have a third of those hairs on the panel. It's really just the tip of the brush is on that panel, just that third. Anything more than that, you're going to get some really wavy kind of inconsistent lines or fat to thin lines. If you keep the third of the brush on that panel, that's all you need. All right, let's bring this up and take a look at the consistency here. Nice, consistent 
line width. So what you're looking for. Now going back to it, I'm repaletting the brush, adding just a little bit of reducer as I go. Pay attention to the angle that I keep that brush. It's about a 45 degree angle right there. 45 degrees, keeping a third of that brush on the panel and letting these long hairs kind of feed the tip. Twist the brush as I go around the corners to clear the belly of the brush so the tip has room to lay the paint down. If you drag the belly of that brush on the panel, you get some crappy chipped looking lines real real unpleasant to look at so clear the belly of that brush out of the way of your turns turn that brush handle in your fingers and you're good to go just like that Here's a fun little tip too. I ended this line kind of crappy. The brush just kind of kept going when I wasn't paying attention to it. And it left this little weird finish on that line. So I'm taking my fingernail and I'm pushing the paint back into that line. This paint takes a little while to dry. So you can manipulate that a little bit with a fingernail or a eraser. Anything that can just kind of get under that paint a little bit and push it. You can fix a lot of things like that, surprisingly. Also, this whole design is second for second, real time. I thought it'd be a good idea to show exactly how fast I am going while I'm working on these lines. I'm going fast enough where I get a nice clean line, but slow enough where I'm letting the paint draw off of the hairs. So speed matters because you got your flow going a little too fast. You don't have enough time for the paint to draw off those hairs. But a little too slow, you can get gloppy. Gloopy? Gloopy. Now I'm loading up for a big turn here. Watch the belly of that brush and watch the angle of my handle. I'm at about 90 degrees right now, and I'm turning the holy hell out of that brush. Look at that. See where the belly is leaning into the line? I'm clearing the belly of that brush so the tip has room to draw that line. Fixing up that little edge there, and done. All right, let's finish pulling this last line and then we'll take a look at the design. Now, what I am looking for in a quality design is the line width consistency and where the lines start and stop and intersect. If you can nail those four points, you got yourself a quality design. Now, I'm just going to take a little bit of mineral spirits on a piece of paper towel and I'm going to wipe this thing clean so then we can use it again at a later time. I do really enjoy practicing with these things. They're super versatile, super easy to clean up, really easy to store, and you can tape them onto anything, any surface, any angle. If you want to practice on different angles or bend it around a gas tank or a helmet, you can do that with these. It's They're super nice. Now let's clean our brush. All right, first I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to wipe the hairs off. I'm just squeezing a little bit. You don't want to squeeze too much or pull those hairs out. Just squeeze a little bit. Get some of that paint off there and start giving it a bath in your mineral spirits. Now I'm going back and forth and back and forth between the mineral spirits and my paper towel. And I'm checking to make sure that there's no paint left in that heel or in that wrap. If you leave paint in that heel or in that wrap, the paint can get hard 
and it will screw up your brush later on. So any paint that is up in that heel, you want to get rid of or else it just won't turn properly. It won't draw paint off properly and it'll be a mess. And then you have to get a new brush. Now that might be good for brush sales, but not good for your wallet. So please take good care of your brushes. I've had brushes that lasted over 10 years. Got to make sure that they stay nice and clean. And a way also to keep them nice is to use that MAC brush brush preservative. I've tried so many different things over the years. I've tried mineral oil. I've used lard oil. I've used motor oil, transmission fluid, all sorts of different stuff. This is the best. This is the best stuff. MacBrush.com is where you can find that. I swear by it. I've used it for 18 years. Haven't found anything better. All right. Now that thing's nice and clean, it's time to pop some bottles. Let's dunk our brush into that oil there. And then we're going to do the same process of palleting our paint into our brush with the oil into our brush. Same thing, we're loading that paint into the brush, making sure that we get every hair so when we store it, it's ready for next time. Speaking of next time, when you want to start your next design or your next practice session, do the same thing as cleaning the brush, just with the oil. You wipe the brush off with a paper towel, swoosh it in your mineral spirits, do it again with the towel, mineral spirits, get all that oil off, and then you can load your brush with paint and you're ready to go store it in a box or somewhere safe and that's it you're ready for next time hey also all of this stuff you can find on tntcustompaint.com that's my website i hope you really enjoyed this video and if you have any questions please ask comment section you can find me on instagram tom hudach artist tiktok tom hudach and thanks for watching we'll see you later